tipsy cause I've been sipping on Henny. I got the study of my vision and she ain't from the city. And she ain't foreign and she boring. Love the way you twerk it, shawty. Throwing money on her own, I call her independent, shawty. What's up, everybody? I'm Evan Rabbit and we are here on Forza Motorsports 7. And we are going to be doing something today on a stock G920 wheel. I know a lot of people have been asking about tips and tricks on how to drift in Forza Motorsports 7 as well as Horizon. Today we're going to get into Forza Motorsports 7. So we do have a stock Z back there. We're going to be doing mild tuning to it. Nothing super aggressive because we're going to start on a lower lower tune. Because that's one of the biggest things I can give advice wise is... Uh, Start on lower powered cars and work your way up. Now I say lower powered cars, it'll probably be about 400 horsepower because these tracks in here don't allow you to drift very, very low powered cars unless you go into open space like the airport and then you can do some low speed drifting. So for the purpose of today, real quick, we have put the stock G920 wheel on. Um, it is bolted on, the buttons are not here, the buttons are off to the side. So we have put the normal size G920 wheel on the car or on the car, on the rig, we're still using our handbrake and our sequential shifter, but we do have the stock rim now. So it's a factory size, not my 350 millimeter NRG innovation wheel. So we're going to be using that because just to show setting wise and stuff like that for a stock rim, because I know a lot of people don't have upgraded rims. So before we do that, we're gonna get into the controller and uh, take a look at the settings that I have here on mine. So when it comes to steering, dead zone axis is I have 0 and 95 um, that's really the only dead zones you really need to worry about gas brake and clutch is all personal preference handbrake as well I do have vibration scale turned all the way off now I am also running a hundred force feedback 120 aligning torque 120 man mechanical trail 100 um, trail scale uh, road feels at 100 wheel dampening scale at 0 centering spring at 0 wheel rotation um, we're gonna we have it at 810 just to give us a little bit of a buffer for today. Normally I'm on full 900, but we are running 810 as a buffer. Steering linearity is at 50. So these are the settings we're going to use. We may have to tweak them maybe a little bit. These are the same settings I use on my full size rim. So we're going to definitely see if uh, this is going to work on the small rim. So we're going to get into tuning this car and uh, get into a little bit of settings and uh, basically car build on this and uh, we'll go from there. So we are running basic uh, 350Z. So basically the main things we need to install first and foremost is drift suspension because if we're building a drift car, we need to have that as well as we're gonna install the full sway bar, front and rear. And we're gonna leave everything else the same. We are going to put a clutch in just uh, for a little bit for sake of you would have a clutch in probably a drift car. We're going to have to put our diff in there. And we are going to keep it on stock tires, I believe, for right now. Yeah, we'll keep it on stock compounds because we are going to be running lower power. Uh, I believe we're going to bump this up to probably 235s in the front. And we're going to go up to go up to 255s in the rear. Now, rims, personal preference. Uh, we're going to put something on here that uh, looks somewhat decent as well as is light put some uh, HREs on there like I said personal preference on wheels you can change them if you want or if you don't like them I will leave the tune up when I'm done doing it for you guys to download if you want or you can build it via this so we are going to put a little bit of power into this car we'll put an intake in we'll probably do exhaust we will probably do all the beginning tune injectors and stuff like that on this car we're probably gonna get it up to about 400 horsepower it's a which is a decent horsepower to start on we're gonna put a flywheel in that just adds a little less weight and then we're gonna try and get it up to 400 if we can so we'll probably do it's a little bit higher than I want we get it 400 exact doing sport valves so 400 exactly, we're gonna do it on a 400 horsepower tune B-Class car and see how this does. So that's pretty much all we're gonna put into the car wise um, for suspension and power and stuff like that. So now we're gonna get into tuning of the suspension and uh, see how it works and then we're gonna hit the track and try it on this wheel and uh, 
see how we do with it. So we are going to drop our tire pressures. Probably not as much as I do in my other cars just because of uh, we may not need to be that low. So I feel a 25 and a 21 should be good to start with. We are going to bump up the camber to three and a half. We're going to leave that. We're going to leave our toes zeroed out. We're going to put our caster up to about a 6.5 to start. Of course, we're going to 60 degree of angle. We're going to leave the sway bars ha as they are right now. And then we are going to soften this up a little bit. Like I said, this is just a basic setup. I'm going to drop this down, not completely all the way, a little bit higher in the front. Then we're going to stiffen that up a little bit. And we're going to see how it handles, and then we'll go from there. I think we're going to leave the diff at 70 and 30. We're not going to fully lock it like I used to. I've started learning a little bit of slip is actually good. We may have to lock it fully with um, this car because of lack of power. So we're going to turn our controller off so that we are on our wheel. And we're going to go to free play. We're going to get the wheel cam turned on first and foremost. We are still on the factory Logitech wheel. I do not believe we should race at um, Long Beach. Let's see if we can find a place that has some uh, nice little sweeps. I mean, we could probably run Lime Rock, but yeah, we'll run Lime Rock to start off with. Run back and put the Lime Rock, see if we can't do it. It may not have enough power to do these sweeps, but we're definitely going to try. So little tips and tricks on the G920, uh, stock rim size, where you see how it goes, because a lot of people are asking me, you know, are these the same wheel settings? And they're like, my mine doesn't feel the same. It doesn't look the same. Well, the bigger rim, the 350 millimeter rim has a little more weight to it. So it's easier to throw. So there's a little bit of a difference when it comes to that. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna go full send and see how this goes. And uh, I forgot I had it on a uh, rolling start. Hopefully my wheel is calibrated right now because I was using the controller. All right, I think we are good. So we're just gonna go send it and see how this works. So overall, I've noticed it is a little bit harder to trans to uh, spin the wheel on the smaller wheel, but it is doable. And I'm actually very surprised with how this car handles right away. So really surprised. I think 100 force feedback might be a little bit high for uh, this rim. So let's uh, bump that down a little bit. Go to options, controller. I gotta switch my uh, handbrake wires. I really need to get an X wire, an X button wired in. I keep forgetting to. So I think we're gonna bump the vibration or the actual force feedback scale down. I feel like 100 is a little bit too much for the small wheel. We're gonna go to 80 and uh, see how that rides. But as for our first throw together uh, tune, uh, handles pretty well. So let's see how this 80 feedback feels. As I totally biffed my injury. So 80 does feel pretty good. This is a very street tuned car, but it's uh. It's running pretty good, actually. Quite uh, quite happy with the handling characteristics of this car right now. Of course, you know we're gonna throw in the ESDA car with this rim and see how it does on a higher built car. Oh, is my handbrake not working? Get wrecked. That moment you connect the wrong wires. There we go, now we're good. All right, so overall, I feel like this is a good basic starting car. So I honestly think people are having a problem with trying to overthrow the cars or going too high of a power at first. 
You don't need a lot of power to drift. A good setup will help. Some clutch kicks to keep the car sideways. A little clutch kick there. So it is very possible. The 80% feedback is definitely a good thing for uh, this Z, or for the Z, for the stock uh, G920 wheel. So tips and tricks, a little uh, drift tutorial on this one is uh, try these settings out. Maybe you don't like them, but it seems to be working well for me. And uh, I guess the proof is in the uh, proof is in the slides right now, because uh, there's no uh, trickery involved with this right now. This is just G920 wheel, handbrake, and a tune, a mildly tuned 350Z. And I actually uh, like how this handles right now. I think I'm going to keep this, uh, this Z how it is. So let's test this in a higher horsepower car because of the fact of I know a lot of people running high horsepower cars. So let's go grab the SDA vet out. But I do like how that Z handles, not going to lie. We got three different versions of my ESDA vet. We got a... Uh, we got, of course, just the regular the usual suspects team livery. Then we have the uh, ESDA livery, Stratton Motorsports on the side, or Stratton Chevrolet. And then, of course, we have just another random uh, livery on there. So we're going to rock the ESDA livery. All the tunes are the same on these. I just built three different ones, so I get three different liveries. I feel like switching it around. So we're going to have to... Uh, we're just going to be going straight into this turn, so hopefully this will work. So, all or nothing. So I probably could have stayed full throttle there, but I'm still trying to feel this out. So, these settings do work on a higher horsepower car. So a very well set up car will uh, definitely help in uh, how the cars feel. Um, on a wheel. Um, I do notice caster makes a big difference, camber makes a big difference, and just the way the suspension does makes how the wheel feels different. So I'm going to throw that 350Z tune up. If you guys want to give that one a shot, I'll uh, name it before we end this episode off so you guys know what it is. But uh, we're getting it with this G920 wheel though. No handbrake needed there. Little brake, little clutch kick. Run this thing out. This vet, though. So happy with how this vet handles, and so happy with how it handles on this, you know, G920. So, when a lot of people have messaged me asking for tips and tricks, here's some for you on Forza Motorsport 7 to get you sliding. And also, it's all about practice. Seat time is a big deal, you know. The more practice you get, the better you're gonna get. The banging red line. I kind of like how the leather wheel feels, not gonna lie. You guys always question why I wear gloves. It's because I can slide my hands better when I'm drifting with that wood grain NRG wheel. But I do like how the leather feels right now. But it makes me want to get a different wheel. Maybe a suede wheel, maybe something on those lines, but... So, we did a test on a high horsepower car and a low horsepower car on a stock g 20 wheel. And we find that the settings need to go a little bit different. Force feedback skill needs to drop some. Lime rack is a good, uh, good place to test, I feel, because it has some good changes with low speed and high speed. And uh, I think you guys can tell with a little practice, you can definitely uh, achieve definitely achieve some very nice sliding on a G920. It's just a little bit of practice. It takes some time. So we're going to go uh, get that 350Z back. We're going to throw that toot up real quick. Where did it go? Ah, oh, get wrecked. It disappeared because of the... Uh, class of car wrecked 
Change class. Forza, fix this, please. Thank you. Oh, wait. I'm gonna hit accept. Forza needs to fix that every so often. It says any, but it's not actually any. So now we should be able to pick our Z. Unless I was totally not looking in the right area. I don't think I could have been looking in the wrong area. So we're going to get the Z back, and I think we're going to switch up tracks. And we're going to go to... You know? We're going we're gonna to send it at... We're going to send it at the uh, Road Atlanta circuit in the, the FD track at Road Atlanta. See how it handles... Or Road Atlanta. Long Beach. I can't even speak today. Get wrecked. So like I said, I will throw this tune up real quick. And I will do that as soon as it loads in before I forget. Because I had, think I did that once before and say I put a tune up and I never actually put the tune up. So we're going to do that before we get throw it down here. But a little bit of a help for you guys. For you guys, if you guys are starting on a wheel or, um, you know, just trying to just trying to get it set up. You know, there's, you know, start lower power. And um, it will help you uh, drift a little bit better. We're going to name this EVL. So this tune is just going to be EVL. I'll put that as a description as well. So if you guys want to check out the 3Z tune. And we're going to set it for any. Drift. Best for handling. Description. EVL. So if you guys want to download the tune and give it a shot yourself. Or if you guys want to build it yourself, you guys can as well. So... We're gonna try it at the Long Beach section, and uh, we're gonna go go for go from there and uh, see how this works. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'll be in the description box below. I hope you guys found this to be a little bit helpful. I know a lot of people have been asking me about uh, G920 and all that, so I decided to bring the stock wheel back on for the purpose of this for you guys. And I am not sure how this Z is going to handle, but we're going to find out. Probably going to be a second gear car. There we go. Nah, third gears works. I thought I was going to tap that wall. So, dropping the force view back down to 80. It's helping a lot with this, but having those trails up and down and stuff like that, how I had them, is also a big, uh, a big thing. So we're going to send this, see how we do. Not expecting too, too much, but see if it's possible. It's almost like a Pro 2 car, but we are getting it. It's actually pretty smooth. Not gonna lie, that was a pretty smooth run for the first time out in the Z here at Long Beach. I think I'm gonna use this car as a little uh, 400 horsepower shredder. A little, uh, you guys be interested in some uh, low horsepower lobbies, like maybe a 400 horsepower drift lobby? I mean, you know, down in the comment section down below. You can do some uh, straight tune cars. Maybe throw a cage in this car and take a little weight out of it, but. I think it's uh, quite fun how it is right now. And I'm actually having a blast with this car. So download this car for yourself. Give it a shot. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if this helps. Um, and uh, maybe it helps to see, you know, the stock wheel on here and see hand movements and stuff. Maybe the, that'll help you realize either something that you're doing slightly wrong or things you can do to correct. Don't wreck. Don't do that. So until next time, guys, I thank you guys for watching and coming back. I'm Evil Rabbit, and I will see you guys next time or in a lobby. <laughs> this car's pretty fun. We're going to leave it. Stock D920 wheel. Two thumbs up.